Photoshop CS5 Extended works with 3D objects. It allows us to create virtual worlds with cool textures and lights and things. But did you know that you can also animate the textures that you've placed on 3D objects? I have a job where I need to create an animation that looks like it's playing back on the inside of a mobile device. Well, your first thought might not be Photoshop, but mine was. Let's go have a look and I'll show you how I did it. All right. Here we are inside Photoshop CS5 Extended. Right now, you're used to looking at the Essentials workspace. I'm going to jump over here to the 3D workspace. It gives me some more tools, and I'm able to see and work with my paths down here at the bottom. On the left-hand side, you'll see that I have a 3D model, and I've got a background inside here. So I'm just going to uh, leave that the way it is, go to the Window menu, and choose Animation. This brings up my Animation panel. And here, I've already moved the phone into a bit of a rotation. So as I start to move this around here, you see the phone is rotating. I get some gorgeous reflections inside here. All of that is easily controlled and enabled inside Photoshop CS5. I chose Photoshop CS5 because of that reason. I love to create my own reflections and environments in here. And when the, the reflection falls on the phone, on the model, I also want that reflection to go across the animated graphics inside the phone. So if we go over to the other side and double click the texture that we have, in this particular model, the texture was created out of a photograph of a mobile device. And I've modified that device with these elements directly inside here. So again, down at the bottom, I've got an animation. And as I play this animation, you see the word enabled is popping on and off. If we go down to that particular layer and I twirl that down, you can see opacity has a bunch of these keyframes. And normally keyframes are a little diamond shaped. The square ones are hold keyframes. A hold keyframe goes from 100% to 0%. So that's over here on the right, opacity 100% for the enabled layer. The next keyframe, it's at 0. If you have a normal keyframe, it will slowly interpolate or change from 100 to 0. I wanted that to flash on and off. So the next step I want to animate is the face of this object. I want it to glow inside. Right now, you'll see face has position, opacity, and style. So if I click on the face layer, go to my effects, and choose inner glow. Now when I choose an inner glow and change the size, make it quite a bit, and change this to a different bevel or a different contour, click OK. And now I've got that set, but I don't have a keyframe. You'll notice when I click on Style, I now have a keyframe. The keyframe shows the glow at that level. Drag this out, go back to my effect, double click on inner glow, and change this value for size to nothing. As soon as I do, you'll notice over here on the bottom left, it's added another keyframe. So now I have an animation going from 100% inner glow to zero. Instead of doing that over and over again, I can copy and paste this, but don't think you're going to use the regular copy and paste from the edit menu. I'm going to shift select both of these, and I'm going to right click on top of this and choose Copy keyframes. And then I'm going to move down in the timeline. And I'm also going to click on the keyframe and choose Paste keyframes. And instead of doing it with just two, I'll select all of these again. If you click over here on the name style, it will select all of the keyframes. Click on the keyframe, copy keyframes, on the keyframe, paste keyframes, select them all. I think you get the idea. You do this a few times. Move that down and paste, and you end up with my animation. So enabled is flashing, and the glowing is flashing. When I save this document, because this is a separate texture document, it saves all those settings. And when I close that up and come back in here, you can see that I can now animate that texture right inside Photoshop. So there's my glow. It's popping down. It's going away. The gorgeous reflections go over top of the full device. All the reflections and shadows, big reflection in the back. 
and when it comes around the other side, you can see everything else flashing. So if the timing isn't right, you just need to go back to that second animated texture and start to work with that. So there we go, lots of control, lots of cool things to allow you to do this kind of a screen replacement inside Photoshop CS5. It's a great application for doing your animations and for doing 3D objects and ray tracing. We could export this out now as a full high resolution ray traced object. We can even export this directly out to a video in the file menu and you can export this out to giant high quality uncompressed stills if you want to now move this into a high end 3D workflow. Let's go get our models and our animation on. Thank <laughs> you.